Well, folks, welcome back. Welcome back to Captain Boat Builder, the second boat build for the Viola 14. And this is uh, episode number five. I'm calling this one painting the hull panels. Uh, you may recall that the last one was pre-finishing the hull panels. So after they were all coated with uh, three coats of epoxy resin and sanded, then they had to be primed and painted. So this episode is about the priming and the painting. Uh, it's taken me quite a while. Uh, I hope there'll be a few tips in here that will help you. And uh, I've tried to uh, minimize the boredom, but it's been a lot of work. And I'm again, hoping that all the work I put in now is gonna save me a lot of time in painting after the boat is put together. So uh, we'll get on with the uh, painting and of course the endless sanding. At last, I'm ready to finally start painting. And uh, what we have here is the three bottom panels. We've got the floor and the two bilges. They've been uh, coated with three coats of epoxy. And uh, the sections that I mentioned before have uh, fiberglass underneath the epoxy. They've been heavily sanded. They're nice and smooth. The blue tape that you see is designed to keep the primer off certain areas. Mostly, you can see here, the these are the edges. This is where the planks are gonna be joined together. So uh, you need to have a good bond, whether you're using fiberglass tape or filleting material. You need to have a good bond. So under the tape, under the tape right here, is epoxy that's been sanded and it's ready for bonding. I've also outlined the area where the um, side supports are, the little, uh, I don't know, not called gussets, but this is what supports the uh, structure of the flotation tanks. Also, uh, right here, we've got the uh, area for the base of the centerboard trunk, the support for the centerboard trunk, and the mast step. So these are the areas that uh, are not going to be painted where the blue tape is. I'm going to put on two coats of primer. I'm going to be sanding them as carefully as I can. And after all this work, again, what I'm trying to do is to be sure that as I put these panels together, most of the finishing will be complete and I will have done all the sanding in a nice flat manner. And also the epoxy didn't run uh, because it went on flat, it laid out perfectly and I'm thinking the primer is going to do the same thing. So I'm getting ready to put on two coats of primer here on the, uh, uh, the three bottom hull panels. I'm also going to be doing the top sides over here on the floor in a little while. So now we're looking at the three bottom panels after one finish coat. I'm using uh, Interlux Brightside single part polyurethane. And uh, I was really quite surprised. I, as an experiment, I've been putting it on with these extremely fine rollers from Epiphanes, Epiphanes. It's, it's pronounced both ways. But I've been putting, uh, I put the paint on with the roller. And uh, I was quite surprised because when I first rolled it out, there were a lot of bubbles in the paint, no matter what I did. And I hope you can pick this up. But right here, you can see those are sections that are uh, heavily sanded, very smooth. That's the join between the panels. That's actually resin that's been sanded and sanded and sanded. And you can see that uh, what's happened, um, I'm quite pleased with this paint, is that um, as it starts to lay out and set up, all the bubbles go away. And I'm pretty sure that the uh, the next coat I put on after some uh, fairly decent sanding with finer grade sandpaper, I think I'm going to get the kind of finish that I was hoping for. Also, you can see clearly now the areas that are not painted. And these are the areas where um, 
we're going to be joining things with resin and um, fiberglass uh, tape. So uh, you won't get a good bond if you're trying to stick it to a painted surface. So uh, the, the bond will be just fine uh, trying to bond up to the uh, epoxy uh, resin that's been heavily sanded. So here we are, one finished coat. This is the first finished coat. And these are the top side panels. This is the inside of the top side panel. And you'll see they're only painted at the ends, uh, forward of the bulkhead and aft of the uh, cross support in the back of the boat. They're only painted at the ends because the middle section is gonna be the inside of the flotation tanks and it won't be seen at all. I'm using a paint from Interlux. It's kind of a mess here, but this is uh, Interlux Bright Side one part polyurethane. Uh, you can thin it with mineral spirits. You can clean up with mineral spirits. This is their basic white that I'm using for most of the boat. What I wanted to show you about this paint that to me is fascinating. I don't know whether you can see it. I'm going to try to pick it up here with the phone and I have to wait for it to focus a little bit. This is the first coat over a fairly well sanded primer and you can see how it looks kind of bumpy. And part of that is uh, the sanding of the primer. The subsurface is not quite completely smooth. And part of it is the paint. This was put on with a foam brush. And you can see some of the lines where I tapered one uh, section into the next section. The reason I want to show you this now is this is fresh and it's going to have to dry overnight. So I'll take another picture in the morning. And this is pretty amazing paint because I think what it does is as it dries, it actually shrinks just a little bit. And in the process, lots of these imperfections will go away. As I said, some of them are in the subsurface. And uh, the other thing about the paint is it's quite thin. And if you look right here, let's see if I can pick this up. Well, I'm not having much luck picking it up. But the paint's thin enough that if you're using a uh, sandpaper that's, um, say, more coarse than, uh, say, 220, the paint is so thin that you can see some of the sanding lines in the coat underneath if you look very carefully. So as I get more coats on here, I'll be using finer and finer sandpaper. In my previous build, I put on five coats, and so... I was down to 320 at the end. But this is the uh, finished coat on some interior sections. This is gonna be in the bow and in the stern. And you'll see uh, how it works. I'm hoping this is again gonna save me a lot of time because it's much easier to paint on a flat surface like this than in the boat. The other thing is you can lay the paint on just a little bit thicker because you don't have to worry about it running and it lays down beautifully. But again, I'll have some, some more shots for you tomorrow after this stuff dries. And I'm hoping you can see how these imperfections, which sort of look like orange peel, are gonna go away. Continuing with the painting. So here we have the uh, top sides. This is one coat, one finished coat. This is what uh, Interlux calls medium blue. Uh, I'm very happy with the paint itself. I'm not too sure about the color. It's awfully bright. Uh, still trying to decide whether I like it or not. But the application was good. It's quite smooth. And uh, pretty happy with the first finished coat. Over here, again, we have all the bottom panels. This is the second finished coat of the Interlux uh, Bright Side. And as you may be able to see from the pictures, we're starting to get a really, really slick finish. I've done a lot of sanding. I'm down to uh, 220 paper. Probably finish up here with uh, 320. And uh, this is two coats. I'm thinking I might get away with four as the finish. Uh, I'm hoping that since I've done all this sanding and surface work, before I even begin to put the boat together. I'm hoping that this is gonna pay off big time 
in terms of getting the interior to look beautiful and uh, get it all done in advance. Eh, we'll see. I've been wrong before. I just wanted to add a few little things that I've learned recently I wanted to pass on to you. It might help you a little bit. If you look at the right, you'll see the can of Interlux Pre-Coat Primer. This is a high build primer and it's quite thick. And on the left, you'll see the Interlux 333 Brushing Liquid. And uh, earlier I mentioned that I had put some brushing liquid in with the pre-coat to thin it out a little bit so that it would flow better. And uh, I seem to have very long drying times. Well, the guy from uh, Interlux, the technical advisor straightened me out. He said that what happens is since the pre-coat is so thick and it's designed to be thick so that you build up the low areas and sand most of it off, it is relatively slow drying. And he said that if you add more of the 333 brushing liquid, maybe as much as 20 or 25% by volume, it'll dry quicker. But then uh, it seems to me the problem is it's also thinner, which is not what you really want. So if you're gonna use this pre-coat primer, just uh, be aware that it's pretty slow drying. And for it to get dry enough and hard enough so that you can sand it um, without a lot of gummy buildup. It may take three or four days. So I'm, I'm still experimenting with this primer. I'm not quite sure whether I like it that much or not. I also want to show you a product that I discovered uh, just the other day at Home Depot by almost by accident. It's made by this company called Diablo. It's called Sand Net. And these are sheets of sandpaper. It's a sandpaper substitute. It's almost like screening. If you look at it, you can see right through it, it's got lots of holes in it. And what I'm finding is that this Diablo sand net, it's a little bit more expensive than regular sandpaper, but not much. And uh, it's quite sharp. It seems to cut better. You don't get the buildup that uh, seems to ruin sandpaper after a while. You can vacuum this stuff to get the dust out of it. You can even wash it with soap and water and let it dry and use it again. So I've had pretty good luck with this stuff. I don't know if this is a new product, but it's new to me. So it's something that you might consider for all of your sanding needs. Well, I can hardly believe it because it seems like it's been weeks. I'm finally just about finished with the uh, preparation of these uh, five uh, planks that are make up the hull. Finished with the painting. This is the new color for the top sides. It's a little bit darker. I like it better. I hope you can see uh, with the glare here, I hope you can see the nice finish that I'm getting with this uh, Interlux uh, bright side paint. This is two coats. I'm gonna put on one more. I've decided for the planking, uh, three finished coats is gonna be enough uh, until the boat is assembled. And then I'll finish it up uh, with some more coats. I did want to show you here, right here on the outside, this is actually the bottom of the top sides. That's where the fiberglass from the bottom of the boat is going to overhang the edge, so it has to bond there. And on the other side, there's another section right here that's not painted. That's where the, uh, that's the top of the top side. That's where the gunnels are going to connect. So these are both areas that have to be uh, bonded also in the bow sections. Uh, it's not painted right up to the edge because I'm going to use fiberglass tape uh, to reinforce the bow. So those are finished except for one more coat. And here we have the three bottom panels. This is three finished coats. I'm quite pleased with the surface. You can see uh, probably fairly well in the phone. You can see how nice and slick it is. Again, I'm hoping that uh, all of my work in advance is going to save me a lot of time later. Uh, just as a quick review, I did want to say that at least my experience has been that the rollers uh, don't seem to be working very well for application. I've had a lot better luck just using the foam brushes. Uh, I did want to mention again that I'm finding that if you let this paint dry longer, the, the finished coats, or if you let the primer dry longer, the primer may be even as much as three days. The longer you let this stuff dry, the harder it gets and the easier it is to sand. 
you get a nice uh, even sanding and uh, a dust and less buildup in the paper. And again, I did want to mention that this uh, Diablo uh, synthetic sandpaper, whatever you want to call it, this Diablo stuff that I've been using from Home Depot is at least so far my experience has been that the stuff is absolutely superior. It's worth the money. It uh, cuts and sands much better and you don't get the buildup. So finally, after all this time and all this work, I'm finished with the coating and the painting of the planking. Uh, again, my hope is a uh, really nice finish and I, it doesn't seem possible, but I'm thinking that this is actually gonna be easier than doing all the painting after the hull is assembled. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.